Okay, so hello dears, good afternoon um, or good day. Uh, again, I'm your Sir, Sir Mark and today we're going to talk about um, chemical examination of urine which is the second part of routine urinalysis. Now, it is this topic na medyo, as I've mentioned in you guys, medyo TMI siya. We have to remember a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of names, mga chemicals. So we'll try to do it slowly and then um, hopefully um, at the end of the lesson, again, I do hope na naaram mo yung get uh, from this. All right. So again, this is um, chemical examination of urine, the second part of routine urinalysis. Now again, my presentation is from Sir Jamu Guasa. Okay. And all right. So we shall now start. Okay. Now for your chemical examination, of course, you're all familiar since you've already had your um, public health sa una during sa urinal urinalysis. Of course, nabot chemical ato. We use what we call your reagent strips because reagent strips, again, they provide simple convenient kaayo na pagtesting because again it's very handy dali ra kaayo and usa ka strip na na dito tanan ang imuhang parameters na kailangang i-test and easy ra pud siya pag-interpret okay um and again easy po ang results dali ra kayo makuha and again easy to interpret now your strips again is here uh, are is this one um basically i believe there are about 10 ka parameters some strips usually mabot og 12 na additional mga duha example ascorbic acid and creatinine will will have uh, that's additional parameters at the end of the presentation na. but most generally uh, generally of the strips uh, most of them contain about mga 10 ka parameters all right okay and these are the parts of your strip you have the plastic strip this is where you hold it right and you have the different um, reagent pads okay all right um, and these pads are again chemically impregnated absorbent so when you say absorbent, of course, it absorbs the urine. And chemically impregnated, each pad has its own reagents and its own respective um, chemical or color reactions um, when the reactions have already take place, taken place. Okay? All right. So again, um, pads plus urine is equal to the different color reactions. Again, it would depend on the different um, uh, pads for their different color reactions. Each pad has its own respective color reactions. Okay? Um, again, for handling of the strip, which we will also discuss in the later part of the presentation. Um, do not hold the pads unless you uh, Do not hold the pad good uh, before testing or you know, pag mag wait pa ka na i test siya. Always hold here, all right? And you take out only a strip when you are about to perform na. Not oh, not uh, mga minutes prior because again, this could affect the enzymes or the reagents present in the pads. Okay, all right. So here are the different parameters. As you can see, um, we have again about 10. Glucose, bilirubin, ketones, spec grav, blood, pH, protein, neurobilinogen, nitrite, and you have leukocytes or your leukocyte esterase. Now, we will go um, one by one. <laughs> Individually, adding nila the different parameters. So again, as I mentioned, medyo TMI. So um, again, this is the advantage of pre-recorded lectures. Kay makapostra mo para maka-internalize and then compose yourself na pod and then balik to study. Okay? All right. And we have additional parameters, as I mentioned. It would depend on the manufacturer of the strips na, but usually these are three. Microalbumin, creatinine, and your ascorbic acid or vitamin C. Okay, all right. So basically, mag ano ta? we'll go each again one by one individually. All right. So are you ready, guys? Okay, so kalma lang ta. All right. So medyo hugaw akong whiteboard. Yes, okay. Anyway, hopefully, klaro na gapon siya. Okay, so we'll now start with the first one, uh, which is glucose. Okay, so that's glucose. Um... Again, glucose normally, no, in a normal kidneys, most of your glucose na na filter from um, glomerulus, they are selectively reabsorbed sa imuhang PCT, okay? Actively reabsorbed. Um, but when, you know, there are certain times, example, in certain diseases, example, diabetes mellitus, or na problema sa imong kidney tubules, tubules, <laughs> tubules, this glucose then now appears in urine, okay? All right. Um, and it's also the most frequently performed chemical analysis on urine because again, um, the, pre the prevalence of diabetes and also mga some kidney-related disorders, hence that is why um, it's quite popular or most frequently put ginagamit ang glucose. Now, we have what we call your renal threshold of glucose. Now, what do you mean by renal threshold? Renal threshold is the amount lang of um, a particular substance, in this case, glucose, na pwede rang ma-absorb um, ma balik sa kidneys. So, example, for glucose, it's only about 160 to 180 mg per dl. Now, if your glucose, um, if your glucose uh, levels is greater than 180 mg per dl, okay, if greater na siya, what happens is, 
dira na mag-release o glucose ang kidneys. Kaya dili na niya makaya to reabsorb because it's already it already reached its renal threshold. Okay? That's the point of renal threshold. Magdira na siya kutob. Oh, dira na siya kutob, dira na siya tama. Hindi na siya mugukod, di ba? Charot. So again, dili na siya kutob. When you go beyond that, ipagawas na sa kidneys. Okay? Pero if it's within the range or if even below that, it reabsorb na sa kidneys. Okay? Alright, that's what we call your renal threshold. Okay? Alright, so again, as a renal threshold sa glucose, 160 to 180 mg per dhl. And again, as I mentioned, it's the level at which tubular reabsorption stops when a sub where in a substance can now be observed in urine. Again, that's the point. If mo too much one, if greater than 180 na gani ang imuhang glucose um, concentration sa imong blood, then of course it it exceeds the renal threshold na. Therefore, mo gawas na nasa sa ihi. Okay, alright. So, di ba FBS? Unsa gani ato ang uh, when can we say na diabetic ang patient? Unsa levels sa FBS dapat? Greater than, ha? Greater than, equal. Do not forget the sign. 126 mg per dl. Do not forget this sign. Greater than, equal. Okay? Alright. Okay, pangutan ka, what is the level na maka-indicate na diabetic ang patient? What is the FBS level na maka-indicate diabetic ang patient? If you answer 126, ha, then that's wrong. It should be greater than, equal, 126 mg per dl. Okay, so therefore, ang normal nato for glucose, it's 70 to 100, that's normal, mg per dl. So, once itong 100 to 125, that's your pre-diabetic. Okay? Pre-diabetic. Uh, pre-diabetic. Alright. So, you'll have this in your clinical chemistry pa. Okay? Alright. So, again, that's for renal threshold. Alright. And when we have glycosuria, the presence of sugar in urine. Pwede pong glucosuria. Alright? But again, when glucose or sugar is already found in urine, we term that as glyco. Surya. All right, glyco, sugar, surya, urine. Okay. All right, now for clinical significance, so why do we test for um, glucose? Now, we have two types. You have first hyperglycemia associated, meaning taas ra kayong sugar levels sa body. And we also have the second slide, Ani, is uh, renal associated, meaning nai problema sa tubules mismo. Okay. All right, so these are the different types. You have diabetes mellitus, pancreatitis. So, of course, DM, na problema sa pancreas, right? May it be insulin um, production or maybe sa cells mismo, na insulin resistance. And pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, which could affect also the production of insulin. Also, of, of course, pancreatic cancer. Acromegaly. So, acromegaly, I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar na sa yung endo. It's increased growth hormone. Now, recall, growth hormone is a hyperglycemic hormone, meaning magpadaghan siya og uh, glucose. Therefore, if nakaagromegaly, increase mong growth hormone, increase po imuhang sugar level. Okay. And of course, Cushing syndrome, increase imuhang ACTH. Same reason with acromegaly. ACTH is also a hyperglycemic hormone sa so magpadaghan siya og glucose. So therefore, if taas kag ACTH, taas po kag sugar level. Okay. And of course, hyperthyroidism, your thyroid hormones are again hyperglycemic hormones. These again promote um, the increase of sugar level inside your body. Okay. And you have pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma is a tumor in the adrenal glands, right? So therefore, increase mo hang catecholamines or your epinephrine, norepinephrine, your stress hormones, your fight or flight hormones. And again, on sa ganin sila, these are hyperglycemic hormones pa rin. So, kung say common nilang uh, upat, they all are diseases um, associated with hormones that are hyperglycemic in nature. Okay, muna ang maka-increase sila og sugar. Alright, don't forget. First three, due to pancreas problem, pancreatic problem. So therefore, na ay impaired baby production of insulin. Now, for the next four, these are all hyperglycemic hormones or diseases that can, you know, cause uh, the increase of such hormones, like example, growth hormone, ACTH, which are again hyperglycemic. So it promotes na mudaghan ang sugar inside your body. And of course, last one is CNS damage. Nga no? Because your central nervous system, most of your glucose mangod are or glucose metabolism happens in the CNS, okay? Now, if of course, may damage sa CNS, mulik ang glucose sa imuhang blood vessels, therefore, mo increase po imuhang glucose levels sa imuhang body. Of course, stress, because again, stress promotes the release of your catecholamines, again, and other hormones na hyperglycemic, alright? And of course, you have GDM, gestational diabetes, whenever you have hyperglycemia during pregnancy. Now, GDM, how many years... Mga public health students na ako, how many years mo convert daw ang GDM to type 2 diabetes? Within 10 years. Ayan. Still in clinical chemistry. Within 10 years, mo convert daw ang GDM to type 2 diabetes. Ayan. Within 10 years, mo convert daw siya to type 2 DM. Alright. Okay. 
So, di rin ako mo differentiate sa types of diabetes mellitus, guys, how type 1, type 2, and GDM. Um, sa clean chem na na siya. Alright? But again, GDM, by the name itself, gestational, diabetes siya during pregnancy. Okay? And of course, pag pag panganak sa baby, mawala na po ang GDM. But again, how many years siya mubalik, mo convert na to type 2 DM? Within 10 years. Okay. Alright. So that's for hyperglycemia associated. Now, we go now to renal associated. Now, for renal associated, when you say renal associated, there is a problem with uh, the kidneys mismo. Okay? So, um, a very good example are your Fanconi syndrome. Um, na ay problems sa imuhang kidney tubules, therefore, inadequate ang reabsorption sa kidney uh, or proximal renal tubules. Therefore, dili ma reabsorb ta ng glucose, mapagawas na siya ang, ang imuhang, you know, ang imuhang uh, glucose. Alright? You have advanced renal disease, osteomalacia, um, pregnancy as a result of uh, mo lower ang renal threshold for glucose during pregnancy. So therefore, bahala gamay rin mo ang glucose levels sa mong katawan since nigamay man mo renal threshold, mupagawas na gapon siya o glucose. Exa example, dili na siya 180. So if nigamay na siya, therefore, mas taas na ang chance na mapagawas ang glucose sa ihi because gamay naman mo renal threshold. Okay? Alright. So that's for clinical significance. Now, I want to, I want to emphasize, guys, usually for renal associated, imuhang FBS ana is normal because again, Usually, you don't have diabetes, okay? Because ang problema is sa kidneys. Now, let's say you have a case study na ang giingon is, ay mong FBS normal, okay, normal daw, pero positive siya sa glucose, sa ihi. Okay, therefore, dili ka makaingon na it's hyperglycemia associated because normal ang FBS. So, you will now consider could be na nag problema sa kidneys mismo, sa tubules. Kaya napagawas ng ihi, dili na, ay napagawas ng glucose, dili na niya ma-reabsorb. Okay, na 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 siya. Alright, but if ang imuhang case study, FBS is high, then positive po ng glucose sa ihi, then it's most likely na nagin siya DM. Alright? Okay. Or other hyperglycemic associated na mga uh, diseases. Alright. So that's for the clinical significance of glucose. Next, we go now to um, the principle. So when we say principle of glucose, what is the principle of glucose? Public health students na ako, guys. <laughs> ako na lang na dapat na dapat na uh, memorize ni nila by now. Alright, for glucose, it's your double sequential enzymatic reaction. Why? Because this is the first reaction. Glucose plus air, room air, in the presence of the enzyme glucose oxidase. Glucose oxidase converts glucose to gluconic acid and peroxide. Okay? Now, kanina peroxide ang gamiton sa next na, 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 na reaction. Peroxide plus a chromogen, meaning one that, that gives color, in the presence of the enzyme peroxidase, converts chromogen to oxidized chromogen. And this is what we see now in our reaction sa kanang pad, okay? Kani oxidized chromogen. So therefore, if unsa kadaghan ng glucose, inanapod kadaghan na H2O2 ang maproduce. So if ever gamay rang H2O2, gamay rang po na makonvert, uh, gamay rang po na makombine sa chromogen para ma-oxidize, Therefore, ang color po is medyo light lang. Inana siya, guys. Okay? So, this is your double sequential enzymatic reaction. Please take note, nga nung double sequential enzymatic, duha ka enzymes gamiton. Glucose oxidase and peroxidase. Okay? Alright. Ayan. And the chromogen is we have this, um, potassium iodide and tetramethyl benzidine. Now, as I mentioned again, please take note of the reagents. How do I remember glucose? Mara, wala ko yung palatandaan. Pero ako na remember is that potassium iodide and tetramethyl benzidine. Okay? Alright. And then for color changes, as you can see, from light blue to about um, dark. So, kanya ang pinakadaghan. Um, as you can see, it's semi-quantitative, meaning you have um, a, a symbol na po siya ay, um, uh, co conversion or like iyahang equivalent in uh, concentration. But usually, most of us, we report lang kanil, semi -quant uh, kanilang symbols. Alright? Okay na na siya. It would suffice already. Alright. And again, ang for colors, pwede siyang green to brown or yellow to green. Again, depending on the uh, manufacturers na color reactions. Okay? That's for glucose. And according to ADA, they recommend quantitative reporting. Because again, that is to, um, to, um, what do you call this? To, to monitor, especially mga diabetic patients. Okay? So that's for glucose. And after glucose, we now go to its interferences. So of course, when we say false positive, meaning makapositive sa reaction or sa result, even if it should be negative. So a good example are oxidizing agents and detergents. Why? Because um, detergents or bleach are good oxidizing agents. Recall that the first enzyme is glucose oxidase, right? So oxidase, ayan, oxidase. So therefore, these oxidizing agents, these oxidizing agents, ilang ipa-intensify or ilang i-magnify ang effect sa glucose oxidase. Ayan. Therefore, 
mo positive yun siya. Because that's the effect of your oxidizing agents and detergents. They increase or they magnify, they intensify the results, okay? Or the glucose oxidase, your first enzyme sa imuhang reaction, okay? All right. And next, you have also false negative um, high levels of ascorbic acid. Why? Because your ascorbic acid is a reducing agent, okay? Diba? If unsay opposite sa oxidase, you have a reductase, diba? Or reducing. Now, your ascorbic acid is an reducing agent. It's a reducing agent. Therefore, ang glucose oxidase, iya hang i cancel. Okay? Dili niya, dili siya mo work because of ascorbic acid. Because it's a reducing agent. So, dili niya ipa work ang glucose oxidase. Hence, wala reaction may tabo. Therefore, na ay false negative. Okay? Get it? Alright. And high levels, levels. <laughs> high levels of ketones. Of course, um, <laughs> high levels of ketones because your ketones are again byproducts of your fat metabolism. These may um, interfere with the oxidizing um, enzymes and agents. Pa rin. And high spec grav, um, in terms of if high specific gravity, sometimes too much na ang glucose na ma overwhelm ng enzyme. So, pwede na dilit niya ma, uh, ma convert ng glucose. Okay, kagets mo. Alright. And low temperature, if um, low temperature. It could be that ma deteriorate ang glucose, yeah, due to low temperature. Therefore, dili na siya maka react with the glucose oxidase. And of course, in properly preserved specimens, your glucose um, deteriorates. And your bacteria, diba, urine has bacteria. This bacteria will now utilize glucose. Okay, so munang medyo ano siya. In properly preserved specimens, it's quite, um, yeah, it's quite self explanatory. Okay, in properly preserved specimens, bacteria will continue to metabolize glucose. Hence, uh, mag, ano siya, mugamay ang glucose na value, gamay ra po ng, uh, dili, wala na glucose na makonvert ng glucose oxidase, and all the enzymes, therefore, ma false negative. Alright, so, first parameter pa siya, that's for glucose. Please take note of the principle. Again, that's your double sequential enzymatic reaction. Unsa na enzymes gamiton? Glucose oxidase and peroxidase. Alright.